In the second part of the video for Module 4, we're going to look at how we create a feature class service and then how we can consume that feature class service on ArcGIS Online to create an actual web map. Now, a lot of what we do for creating the actual web map part, the second half of this video, we could also use for the map class. So it's not exclusive for the feature class except the editing part would not be there because again a map service is different than a feature service. So again to remind you a feature service is a layer in which we can do editing. It must be in a relational database for this to work or it must be in Arc, on ArcGIS Online and been created as a feature service and hopefully you're going to be able to do this from having a relational database and coming off of your own server. It is possible to be done through ArcGIS Online completely, but this module is going to assume that you have your own relational database that you've connected to. Again, it could be for the whole course, but that you've been able to connect to a relational database and build a feature map service on your own ArcGIS server. So that's going to be the assumption here. So you're going to start a new map like you did previously. You're going to create this um, as a feature class. Uh, map, you'll be adding layers from the web. Um, so we're going to see how this all transfers. So we're on ArcGIS Online. We said we want a new map. And if you notice here, we see a window that is very similar to what we saw before. Um, we've suggested um, that we are using here a feature class service. So if we look at this right here the last part of this name we will see that it is not any longer a map service but instead is a feature service so if you need to go back and review what you did previously when you made a map on ArcGIS Online where this time we are using a feature service um, and here's the, everything else is basically the same again since this is a feature service and this is coming off of my ArcGIS server we have a public IP address for the server, but actually where the data is at, which is in a relational database, it has no, it does not have a public IP. It has a private IP. It's behind my firewall. So some things to do, click to add layers, select a base map. We're using OpenStreetMap here. A new button now is going to appear. You'll see that in the next slide. Click save and share. Be careful who you share this to. Do not share it to everyone because that would give everybody in the world the ability that has an account the ability to make edits um, to your service. You would have a very small group that you would give this ability to. Other people you'd give the ability to read the, by using a map service of the same layer. That's created back in the ArcGIS server when you created you had those check boxes. Was it going to be a KML? Was it going to be just a map service? You would have clicked both a feature service and a map service. And for viewing it, you'd use the map service. Only the feature service is used being able to do editing. Um, again, because this, of some of the nature of this, um, you have to have the right permissions to be able to get into this layer that we're going to be demonstrating. So when we share it, notice we did not share it to everyone. And that was intentional. We shared it to our class groups um, here and we selected who could see it on um, there. This is the link to the map. If you try to go to that link to the map and you're not in one of these shared groups, then you would not be able to see the map properly. Well, you would not be able to do any editing on the map. Definitely, the map may or may not show up. But um, we have shared it only to a small group. And that's what you would do in a production environment. You'd share it only to those people who had editing rights to it. You wouldn't share it to the entire company. We cannot embed this map into a web page. The reason we can't embed this map into a web page, you notice this is um, left grayed out, is because this is not a public map. If we shared it to everyone, then we could embed it in a web page. But since it's not shared to everyone, we cannot do it. We can make a map web application with it. But um, again, you have to have the right permissions. Copy the link here and take a look at the link. Make sure everything's done. And when you're all finished, 
I exit the screen, click on done. Notice now we come up to this mapping screen. Here's my different layers that was in that map package. Um, notice these are SDE and SDE shows me it's coming off of my relational database. But there is this new button that wasn't there before which is edit. And the reason the edit button is there is because this is a feature class service and therefore you have the ability to edit it. The software automatically realized it was a feature class service and that's for put this button in there. Um, and then you get all these layers and we've got details about all these layers as noted before. Click on any one of those layers um, and this will expand as you can see here under the edit button. It may come in already expanded. This is a project where we're looking at historical buildings. We're looking at a 1905 map of downtown Louisville, Kentucky and we're trying to identify what buildings were there, where the water lines were, where were the cisterns. The cisterns were generally used for fire protection and other items about this historical map. So if I was looking at the cistern layer, that's the first layer up here. If I was looking at this layer up here on the cistern layer, um, then I go and click somewhere on my map to try to add a new cistern in. If there's more than one thing there, it wants to know which of these layers. And notice this one shows me three different objects that were identified at that location. The top one showing me its buildings. And here's the building classification. Um, but I don't want to do building, so I would use my arrows over here to find the appropriate layer that I'm looking for. So you got to realize what layer you're on. just can't click and things. What you might do is turn off other layers, but you do have the ability to edit multiple layers at the same time. And so just turning off other layers is not maybe the best thing for you to do and things like that. So you do need to be aware of that ability on editing. So we make changes. You got to save your changes. Um, again, this is a production layer, so you don't have necessarily permissions to make changes. Or if you do make a change um, because you do have the right permission to be in the layer, make sure you don't save it because we don't want to tear up something we're doing for production work, but we want you to see how production work works. Um, open a new browser window. You can paste that URL in the browser window and you can see what's going on there. Again, you have to log in to be able to make things work properly. This is different than, by pasting the URL is different than embedding a map. Embedding would actually be part of a web page and things. So instead of using my information here, you should be using your own information off of your own server. We show you screenshots to show you what things are going to look like, but you should be using your own service. Okay, you're going to return to the sharing page and click on a web application to see the results. And what we want to do is now make a pretty web map, sort of like what we did with Silverlight in Flex. Um, again, this is for the feature class, so this is going to have editability on it. This is not just the general viewer, which would be non editable, the map service. So we go to Web App Builder. And you can see a piece of Web App Builder over here on the right hand side of my screen. We're going to select the theme tab. There's predefined themes for us. And we're going to select a theme that we like. And we have also color ramps and all kinds of things. And how you make this all look is very important to make it look presentable for whatever the project is. But again, you don't need to um, go into tremendous detail here. This is more of what your company might require. You might actually build custom templates, but that's beyond the scope of our class. Notice there's a save button down here on the bottom of the screen. This is actually the right hand corner of my map frame. Again, it's titled Louisville Sanborn, but this is that 1905 map. You can put buttons down the left hand side of the screen here. There's also predefined three spots here to put um, widgets in. So these are things like layers um, that you can turn on and off. They might be an edit button. There's all kinds of different buttons and that's what we're going to talk about in a few moments. But we have 
these areas that we can put widgets in, similar to what you did in Silver Life and Flex Viewer. So we're going to ask you to select the map tab. You can see it's selected here. When I selected the map tab, we came up here and says choose a web map. Um, that's our background map that we're looking at. But what we're really looking here is at what view do you want to um, have. Use the current view, which is whatever would be showing up in this little window. Or use a default view, which is the extent of the map. It depends on what the map is on which is the appropriate view to use. If generally I use this um, default view as noted with the red arrow there because that's going to change as my map changes. So let's say right when you start you have four city blocks. Eventually you have ten city blocks and if you only had zoomed into those four city blocks that would be all that would be visible when somebody comes to your map. But if you use the default extent, the full view of your map. That way when somebody logs in as you've added more data, it's going to extend to show all the data. What we want to do next is go over to the widgets and we want to configure some of the widgets. So you can see we're now in the widget tab and we can see some of the widgets um, that we have available and here's position one, two, and three that were on my screen that we looked at a couple moments ago. So we also have the ability to put things on the sidebar and so that's what we are going to click on the sidebar and you can click here to add a widget. We're going to do that in a moment. Um, so we have three locations. You have the sidebar, the other widgets, and the three buttons that you're looking at. So here's the other ones that you're looking at. Here's the one, two, and three and this is the sidebar here. Um, we're on the sidebar. There's two already pre-established to me, legend and layer list. And here I click to add more of them. So that's where we're going to click. And you can see some of the ones that are now available. There, it's new widgets being built all the time. So there may be a different quantity of these um, than what's showing up here. Notice there's an edit widget. Um, there's again the layer widget and the legend widget. Those two are already there. Base map gallery where you can let the people choose whatever their base map is going to be, where they can build their own bookmarks for your map. There's all kinds of different widgets. We want you to basically select some of them and use them. Each of these widgets in general has a different configuration window that you need to be aware of. Um, notice the editing pencil will appear um, as you hover over each widget and there are items that can will be actually placed on the map. Select items for your map is noted here as I said before use three or four it doesn't really matter but there is a limited size to the scale bar if you put too many widgets on there then you're gonna um, have to click on the little three dots that you normally see when you have more information click on those to get to the additional um, situation. Here's the ones I added to the map that I built. The overview map, that's just the normal typical little square map. You see coordinates, I always like to know where I'm at. A home button to take me back to my original default location. My location, I have to have a GPS for this to work and a scale bar are some of the things that I've included here. Click on the first of the three numbered buttons and we're going to place widgets there. And we remove some things as you can see. Click on other attributes. So you can see I've now added three widgets here. A bookmark widget, the widget for um, base maps, and a legend widget. I took the legend widget that was over here and removed it. Um, I'm branding my map, so that's the other attributes here. Louisville Sanborn. This is being built with Application Builder for you. You can have a QR code created to take you to this map if you would like. So there's lots of things you can do in this. So this is building out that production quality map. By building out that production quality map, you're going to now have the ability to um, make it into a very usable 
map for yourself. As noted before, make sure always your SQL server is behind a firewall. So for your assignment, basically you're going to create a feature class map that can be edited. You're going to make this map available via a screen image and also a URL to your instructor so that your instructor can actually go in and edit your map and actually add content. So again, when we talk about editing a map, we're talking about adding content to the map, not editing the look of the map. So it's about, if I had a historical marker map, it would be a matter of putting historical markers on it potentially. Um, so it's what is the content that you're going to put on the map. It has really not nothing to do with editing the look of the map. That's a different type of editing. That's what we've just been through, building the map. But when we're talking about editing, we're talking about that feature layer, being able to actually modify content or add new content to your map. So this is the end of the second video. There's a third video which will show us how to do some things with field data collection.